Hi, my name's Steve, I'm the British Railroader and welcome to the Model Railway Room. And today we've got an update on the progress that I've been making on my city yard layout. Before we get into that though, um, first thing I want to talk about is the name, um, City Yard. So I came up with City Yard because it's generic and theoretically it could be in any city in the US. Now, obviously my, the railroad that I really want to model is the New York and Atlantic Railroad, which is on Long Island. So I could give it a New Yorky kind of name. Um, but I thought I'd just put City Yard there and that, that would be that would be the name for the time being. However, the other day I managed to pick up the May edition of Railroad Model Craftsman. And as you can see, the layout featured is the Lakehurst Industrial Park. And um, this layout, um, if I just quickly turn to it in the magazine, is by a fellow Brit, um, no less, who... Um, I think I'm on a couple of groups with him, Ray O'Neill, um, who's uh, over here in the UK. Um, and I'm certainly on a couple of groups with him on Facebook. And he's built this layout. And I was looking at the name and thinking Lakehurst Industrial Park. And actually, is this a yard or is it an industrial park? It's got you know, it's going to have various industries, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm toying with changing the name um, to calling it something industrial park. It could be city industrial park. It could be downtown industrial park. Who knows? So if you see a sudden change on the videos, that's because I've come up with a name. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go and have a look at the layout. OK, then. So the first thing you are going to notice is that a street has appeared. Um, on the layout. And for those of you that are in the same groups as me on Facebook, you would have seen some of this. But um, so basically, I wanted to get this in before I did the ballasting. And I have a certain way of making my roads. Um, and also, I kind of used for some of the street infill, a technique that was shown by Boomer of Boomer Dioramas fame. So I know that some people want to know. So the roads are a card stock um, sub-base. I think it's one or two millimeter cardboard. And then it's been surfaced with what we in the UK generically know as polyfiller. Um, but it is this stuff, interior ready mixed filler. So if I've got a hole in the wall where I've drilled, I will quite often use this and then sand it off and then paint it. But it works really well <laughs> for road surfaces. So you've got card, there's a little bit of styrene sheet just rising up towards the track level, which is just under, because I like to keep the tracks raised, and then coated with a thin layer of the filler. Yeah, that's then sanded and painted, etc. Now, these inserts here, as I said, this is done boomer style. If you go back about a year ago, he showed you how to do this. But basically, and here's one that I built that wasn't quite the right size. But you make a trough that um, a flat plastic card and L girder that you then fill with. And I've got it here. Move that up. Modeling paste. Um, that is, a, I think it's a resin or an acrylic, sorry, an acrylic paste. And so that was filled into here. And again, that was sanded and painted. So that was that bit done. The pavements started as strips of hardboard, three millimeter, that was then given a coating of sand texture gel 
Um, we then had, I then put these edging pieces on. Now these are laser cut. Um, I think, yes, I've got some left. Um, they are from a company called In the Greenwood, um, which I will put a link, uh, an email website link down below. Um, and once the texture gel was, has dried and hardened, I then scored in these lines and then painted, weathered, etc. And then last but not least, here, which someone said to me, had I used some paste or gel, these, this is actually just styrene that's been cut to size, roughened up a little bit with sandpaper and then painted. So that's the road. So they're in place um, so that I can then do the ballasting. What I've also done over here on what's going to be like the team track, I've put this here, which is a piece of foam core board, which again has been coated in textured gel and then painted and weathered to make it look like concrete. And it just raises things up a little bit, which makes it still a little bit low for my forklift truck, but a little bit better than it was. Just moving over to my um, duck under lift out section. That's all now completed and wired and I've got some bolts in just to help keep it aligned. And I think that is the update for the layout. Oh, one thing I did manage to get hold of, which are completely wrong for the layout set in this era, but a couple of Concor Long Island MP65, no, 54, sorry, MP54 um, non-powered coaches. And yes, don't get me wrong, these were st steam hauled and they would have been retired by the 1950s, but um, they were an absolute bargain on eBay and um, they definitely needed to be bought just for the sheer hell of it. If I can, I'll try and get a steam loco and perhaps we'll have a pretend steam special running on the layout. Aside from that, I have managed to rescue some old buildings that are probably about 20 or 30 years old um, that I've had knocking around for years um, and they're going to be slowly done up. I've got one there and obviously I've got this shop over here. And there we go. That's the progress on the layout so far. Okay, so that's where I am at the moment. Um, the good thing is, is now with that street in and various other bits, I can start doing some ballasting, um, which is my least favorite job on a model railway, um, but I can do it a bit at a time and we'll go through that next time. But um, things that are coming up, I'm hoping to have a little video um, in the next few days um, with a steam train in it, which is very unusual for me, but just hang on. Um, we'll see if that actually comes off. Um, but aside from that, I will probably see you again um, in a week or so's time with what I'm hoping will be another update on the layout. And you never know, by that time, it might be called something completely different. But anyway, Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. The more the merrier. I'm heading towards 400 subscribers, which in the grand scheme of things on YouTube is not a lot. But for me, that's, uh, you know, in less than six months, I've got almost 100 more subscribers than I had at the end of 2022. So that's going really well. I'm hoping if it carries on like this, I might hit 500 by the end of this year, which would be a big milestone for me. So thanks again for watching. But this is Steve saying farewell from the Model Railway Room. Bye-bye.